Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking our second look through some cool movie tie-in paperbacks that I pulled from my collection. Um, some real crackers in this one and uh, I'm sure if you love movies and movie tie-in and vintage paperbacks as much as I do, you're going to really love this video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start off with our second look through my movie tie-ins and we'll start with this pan one. Now, I probably will do a separate video on pan movie tie-ins because they did an awful lot over their, uh, their history. But I did want to show this one, which is a little bit special. And this is uh, The Man Who Finally Died by John Burke. Now, um, I've got a couple of fellow pan collectors. Um, one is called Tim Kitchen. He runs the pan collectors website and he has the original cover artwork to this one so this is um it's got stanley baker there and obviously peter cushing are the main stars and he owns the original um cover artwork by sam peff um he also has a copy of this sun by peff then i've got another chap a friend of mine johnny mains and he's a horror editor and author and he has a copy signed by john burke and here is my copy that i've had since i was a kid and mine is signed by peter cushing in 1990 there which is pretty cool, isn't it? So uh, I wrote, um, I wrote off to Peter Cushing when he was in, um, he, well, he was quite near the end of his life, sadly, um, but he was in uh, like a care home and I sent off, he was really entertained to fans, fans could go and visit him and interview him and talk about his career. And he was always so welcoming. Um, so a friend of mine gave me his address. I said, just send a few bits and pieces off, which is what I did. And it included this, uh, this pan book here. So uh, yeah, absolutely lovely that one and a real highlight of the collection. And I thought, well, it does fit. It is a movie tie, so I thought I'd put it in here. Um, next, um, that early 70s uh, film, sci-fi movie, Logan's Run. Always fascinated by this one when I was a youngster, and it still holds up pretty good today. Uh, Michael York, Hedge Jenny Agatha. Um, I think this is uh, early to mid-70s, yeah. So this edition is 1976, but this it first came out in 1970, so I guess that was sort of tying in with the movie back then, amazingly. This is an interesting one. Um, this is released under the Panther Science Fiction uh, imprint by Colin Wilson. It was his book, The Space Vampires, and it was filmed as Life Force. Um, always had a soft spot for um, uh, Colin Wilson. Um, I actually did a, an event with him many years ago when I was in the uh, in the book trade. Did a signing together, and that was it. Was packed. It was fantastic. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant event, and you couldn't believe what. Uh, what a knowledgeable chap he was. He really, really was. Um, so, yeah, it's so a really uh, interesting film, that one, um, if you've never seen it. Um, she, I've got to say, she does spend most of the movie walking around and pretty much start naked. But that's maybe half the charm. <laughs> um, this is a great one, and I believe it's it's quite scarce. It's a US edition. And this is uh, The Making of the Movie Jewels by Edith Blake. Um, on location on Martha's Vineyard, which is obviously where a lot of this was filmed. Um, this is a, it's American edition, but it's got a UK import sticker on there. Um, lots of photos in this one, behind the scenes stuff. Um, I particularly like the uh, chapter headers and things uh, where they got the shark on, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, quite, quite a scarce book, this one. And I think if you're into the movie George, and I know quite a few people are, um, it's worth getting. Now look at that, that's interesting. Look. This is a fifth printing from October 1975, and only it was only published in July. So I would say, evidently, this came out and was already a bit of a success. I, got, I pretty much think this is probably the only copy I've ever come across. Um, but if you're into Jaws, I think it's definitely worth uh, getting your hands on one. Another great, great film, uh, The Italian Job, um, another Michael Caine, 1960s classic. Um, Troy Kennedy Martin uh, went on to do um, uh, The Sweeney, I believe. Um, amongst other things, he was he wrote for a lot of stuff for TV as well as film. Um, and with a few stills on the back there, the, the famous minis, and uh, there's uh, Noel Coward in prison and um, Michael Caine there. Um, great, great stuff. Music by Quincy Jones, really memorable soundtrack. Um, there we are, look, a pound I paid for that one. I think that was a, a pound well spent, don't you? I'm just trying to see when this edition came out, if it was 60s or not. Yeah, look, first published in Great Britain in 1969, 
reprinted in July 1969, not available in any other edition. So I guess they're saying this was a paperback original rather than a uh, rather than having any sort of hardback. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. That's the Italian job. This is another great film that I, I loved and quite haunting when I uh, watched this when I was growing up, that Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is tying in with the, tying in with the Donald Sutherland and uh, Leonard Nimoy version back in uh, the late 70s again, was it? Or very early 80s? Let's have a look here. 78? Was it really that long ago? Yeah. Um, once again, this one had a, uh, a photo novel released for it as well. Um, back to the 60s, another Michael Caine one, uh, The Ipcris File. Um, Penguin did uh, tie-ins for the other um, uh, movies in this series, but this is a, a nice particular one. It's also a Panther Crime Ban. I don't know if you've ever come across these before, but I'm, I'm still looking for a definitive list of all the books that were released as Panther Crime Bans. I've got maybe 10 or so, and I really, really like them. It's really like distinctive. Um, so if anyone's got a list of those, I'd love to know. Um, this particular edition, Panther Crime Band edition, first published February 1966, that one. And it certainly uh, is a great one, isn't it? Another very popular movie tie, and that's uh, Midnight Cowboy. Um, John Voigt, Dustin Hoffman there. Great film, if you've never seen it. Um, good stuff. Good, good stuff. John Voigt, of course, was the, uh, or is, he's still alive, the father of um, Angelina Jolie. He's her dad. Bit of a 50s one, this, a British 50s one. So this is Tony Hancock in The Rebel. So The Rebel was, uh, Hancock was a huge star in the UK on radio, and then he had a BBC TV show. Um, he also did a couple of movies, uh, Punch and Judy Man and The Rebels. So this was, uh, neither of the movies are that great, to be honest. Um, I think this one's better than The Punch and Judy Man. And uh, this is the film tie into that one. Uh, pretty scarce, I believe, that, uh, that particular film tie. This is an American um, movie time for a British film, which is Room at the Top. John Brain, quite a, a famous, famous movie, that one. Nice condition, that one as well. Room at the Top. Um, this was another sort of late 70s, early 80s British movie. It was uh, Handmade Films who produced the... Uh, um, like the Monty Python movies. Um, it was uh, the film company financed by George Harrison, one of the Beatles. And uh, this was the adaption of Scrubbers, quite a harrowing movie about sort of borstal life in a, a women's prison. Um, yeah, 1982, that one. Quite scarce, I believe, that particular book. And doubt it sold very well at the time. Something a bit more modern. Uh, fantastic movie, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Um, this was... Uh, adapted from the screenplay by um, Max Allen Collins, who's an absolutely fantastic author in his own right and a real star of um, of uh, like noir fiction. Amongst other things, I remember reading some of his comics, in fact, um, uh, some time ago. A real accomplished author. That's his adaption of Saving Private Ryan. Now, this next one's probably the oldest movie time that I've got in my book, in that it was published during the, the First World War. And it's... Um, it says it's by John Buckham. And what this is, um, there was a propaganda movie uh, on the Battle of the Somme. And uh, this is basically the adaption of that movie, if you can believe it. So in actual fact, this is a very, very early movie adaption of a propaganda film, um, if you can believe it. So um, the Battle of the Somme, I believe, was 1916. So um, I And the book wouldn't have been much after it. Um, so around that sort of time that this was published and uh, it is quite incredible a really nice book in actual fact beautifully produced um, totally inaccurate in regards to the uh, what actually went on at the song and it was um, I think produced as a bit of a morale booster rather than anything else um, quite scarce and um, unusual um, this one is perhaps the first um, legitimate movie tie-in that I've got, the earliest one that I've got, and it's to tie in with a Harold Lloyd silent film, which is Speedy. Um, I, I do love Harold Lloyd. I, obviously, Laurel and Hardy are my favourites, but Harold Lloyd is also very, very good. Um, there's the, the back cover of it. It's great, isn't it? Reader's Library. Now, there's loads in this Reader's Library series. I mean, easily over 100, maybe more than that. Um, but this one dates, I believe, from the 1920s. 
Um, there isn't actually a date on this one, but it's it's pretty early. And once again, even back then, they were starting the tradition of um, having uh, stills inside from the film, which is great, isn't it? I do love Harold Lloyd. Definitely my favourite after Laurel and Hardy. Um, and this one was, yeah, I think 1922, something like that. So it's certainly an early movie tie-in. Um, the next, something a bit more recent. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on the more recent Star Trek books. I've covered the early stuff up until about 1980. But these three here, so we got Star Trek The Motion Picture, uh, The Wrath of Khan. These are the American first editions of the movie tie-ins. And finally, um, The Search for Spock, which was the first three classic Star Trek movies. And they're all fantastic. And like the Star Wars movie adaptions, they are actually very, very readable. Um, they have um, good authors on these. Yeah, we've got Gene Roddenberry wrote the first one, then Vonda and McIntyre uh, wrote this one, and um, Star Trek II as well. So uh, great, great books. Tough to find, believe it or not, in um, movie tie-in first edition. I mean, they really are quite tough to find. It's certainly in the UK. Um, last little pile here. So this is a great 70s classic, isn't it? Taxi Driver. Um, what a film this was, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Um Robert De Niro, uh, just just brilliant. He was at his edgiest best in this, wasn't he? Nice with the uh, few stills on the back there. Painted cover on the front, based on the original screenplay, this one. Um, not sure what's that. This is the third printing of this one, 1976. Great, great jacket on that one. And I'm never too worried about what printing some of these are because it's just nice to have them, um, more than anything, you know. Um, another... One of my favourite movies, and that's Tron. I should make a bit more room over there. And that's Tron. Um, so in between the Star Wars, you had Tron and you had the Black Hole um, as like spin-offs, as it were, in the sci-fi genre, keeping it alive. Um, and Tron was one of my absolute favourites. I just love it to death and still do. Um, so that's is the British Tron movie time, and it's really, really great. This is another great book, and this is... Uh, the making of 2001. So, huge, as you can see, it's a huge book. Massive photo insert section here, which is fantastic for fans of the movie. Um, it is a Stanley Kubrick classic, that's for sure. Um, I certainly love it. A huge, huge American book here. Um, this is the fifth printing, but first published in... Oh, no, first, first printed in, in Harbag. It's got a first printing down there in 1970. But... I said quite scarce to find over here. This is a nice tight, tightly bound copy of what is quite a scarce, scarce book. If you're into 2001, you definitely want to track yourself one of these down. Now the next one's one that's become quite collectible recently, and that's uh, Westworld. So on the back of the HBO series, which as we film this is in season three now, um, Westworld, the original book has become highly sought after, particularly um, this edition with the uh, new introduction by the author um, after the movie and also the uh, the cool 32 page photo insert again, tying in with it. And as you can see, it's a really, really tight, nice copy of this one that I've had for years. Um, it is also, I believe, yeah, it is also the first from March 1974. Um, Great, great stuff. If you've never seen the original Westworld, it's superb. I really do recommend it. And this particular book, I've seen, if you look on eBay under completed auctions, copies of this are set for £60, which is incredible. I've just had it since back in the day, you know. Um, just a handful more to go through now. So this is another interesting one. It was a non-hammer, but that sort of style, uh, late 60s, early 70s horror movie, which find a general. I think this one was early 70s. Um, Vincent Price was in it, and uh, Ian Ogilvie, who went on to become the saint. Um, and this slightly battered old copy was from 19, 1968, but quite scarce, that Witchfinder General. And then a couple more, just to finish off with The Beatles. And uh, once again, I have done um, a, a video on Beatles movie tie-ins um, and Beatles paperbacks. And um, I'll do a link to that one up above. But this was to tie in with uh, Yellow Submarine. But there were also movie tie-ins to Hard Day's Night. And there was a, a, a British and American edition of Help as well. But I've got them all, but I've done them in a separate video. But my all-time favourite Beatles movie tie-in was for Yellow Submarine, which I absolutely love. That's the um, British one, published by 
New English Library. And this is the American one, published by Signet. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Scarce books to find. They're the same inside, uh, but very scarce books to find in nice high grade. Um, so if you ever do come across the Beatles books, I'm sure um, if you're like me, you'll pick them up in a flash because they're just superb. Really, really great stuff. I love them as I love the Beatles. OK, so there we go. So that finishes the second look at some of my perhaps cooler movie times. I do hope you have enjoyed looking through them as much as I have. Um, some really, really uh, great books in there and um, they are very much fun to collect. If you have enjoyed this video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing if you haven't already for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.